हेलो गाइस एंड वेलकम टू लॉ पुत्र यूट्यूब डिस्कस अबाउट सोर्सेस ऑफ मुस्लिम लॉ आई एम जगन्नाथ कुलकर्णी एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस डिस्कशन टुडे फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट व्हाट इज मुस्लिम एंड व्हाट इज मुस्लिम लॉ मुस्लिम द वर्ड मीन्स सबमिशन मुस्लिम इज अ पर्सन हु फॉलोज इस्लाम फेथ और इस्लाम रिलीजन the muslim law applies to whom it applies to born muslim that is the people who are born as muslims it also applies to those who have been converted as muslims and it also applies to khojas halai memans sunni boras of gujarat daudi sulemani boras molesalam bros girasis also muslim law governs people of muslim religion so it is a personal law what we call in regular parlance it's sharia and it provides rules and guidelines on various issues such as marriage divorce inheritance gift etc so it is a personal kind of law it deals with the personal matters of muslim people now we need to see about the sources of muslim law so first of all there will be primary sources and secondary sources primary sources are also called as the ancient sources first and foremost is al quran which is the book of allah second is sunnat or hadith or sunna which means it is the tradition trodden path again this sunnat will be of three types sunnatul qawl that is spoken word sunnatul fail that is conduct and sunnatul tahrir that is silence after sunnat we have the ijma which means consensus one word of the same page consensus of whom either of companions either of jurists or either of people or masses and lastly the primary fourth source is the qiyas which is about the analogical deductions so al quran then sunnat then ijma and then qiyas in secondary source we have the customs which is known as urf then we have the modern sources also the first is the precedent that is the judicial decisions second is the legislation and third most important which is being followed in civil criminal everywhere is justice equity and good conscience so these are basic the sources of muslim law now let us discuss them in detail the first is as we mentioned is the al quran this al quran this quran word has come from the arabic word qura which means to read and muslims believe that this quran al quran which is a holy scripture which is developed during 609 ad to 632 ad of long period of 23 years it contains 104 chapters they which are called as surahs and 6236 ayatas ayats with 77 77934 words so this is comprising the quran this is the only revealed book of allah that is allah's direct message which is discovered during two periods makkan period Madinan period, and Muhammad was the last prophet who was supposed to be sent by God, that is Allah, who received this wahi during the Jahiliya period. This Jahiliya period is called as the period of harshness, period of sadness, period of conflicts all over between different tribes of Muslims, and these are the revelations given to Prophet Muhammad, means means peace be upon him by Allah. so these are all the allah's revelations and out of these uh, 6236 ayats 200 ayats provide the guidance they are called as the legal principles and they provide guidance on range of subjects including worship morality family law criminal law so this is the personal law provided by al quran after al quran we have the second primary source which is called as sunnat or hadith or sunna these are the traditions which means it is the trodden path of whom injunction of allah 
in word of prophet now what is not mentioned in quran but it is in sunnat and which is the some practice precedents of prophet muhammad whatever prophet said or did without reference to god without reference to allah that is called as the sunnat and sayings and actions of prophet muhammad prophet muhammad means peace be upon him includes his statements actions and tacit approvals three so obviously it provides the guidance on matters which are not explicitly mentioned in al quran and these will be of the three types one is sunnat al qawal that is words spoken then sunnat al fail that is conduct and thirdly sunnat al tahrir which is silence so whatever word is spoken that is also considered conduct is also considered silence is also considered then we have the third primary source called as ijma ijma means after the death of prophet original law making process ended obviously then those questions which could not be solved either by principles of quran or sunnat or sunna they are decided by the jurists with introduction of institution of ijma and now those jurists which are having the knowledge of law they will have the agreement of muslim jurists they are called as the mudahids and they are particular age on a particular question of law this is the consensus of jurists opinion once constituted they are regarded as equal to quranic verse means equal status of quran they are equally binding on people and without isma rules of islamic law would have been diffused incomplete it covers the vast subject and authenticated right interpretation of quran and sunna then isma of companions that is concurrent opinion of companions of prophet most authoritative could not be overruled or modified isma of jurists again unanimous decision of jurists other than companions and lastly isma of people or masses that is opinion consensus of majority of muslims which was acceptable to all but this will have a little value then we talk about the last primary source of muslim law which is called as the qiyas it derived from hakish shikish that is beat together measurement accord equality and measuring on comparing a thing to a certain standard or to establish an analogy analogy if the matters which have not been covered by quran sunna ijma law may be deduced from what has been already laid down by these three authorities that is quran sunna ijma by process of analogy and this analogy is termed as qiyas it helps in discovering the law and not to establish new law to extend law of text to cases which do not fall within purview of text which are capable of being extended and should not be confined to a particular state of facts or rules having a specific reference so it will not have clear correlation but only the analogy and this analogy deduced should not be inconsistent with dictates of quran or authority of sunna should be applied to discover a point of law not to determine meaning of work used in text it must not bring a change in law embodied so there won't be a new law in case of conflict jurist is free to accept any one of deductions if there are two deductions say then the jurists are free to adopt any one and of much lesser significance because on analogical deductions resting as they do upon applications applicable reasons which is always liable to error because the human intervention is there now we will discuss about the secondary another four sources the first is customs hindus recognized in the year 1868 that custom if otherwise legitimate it should supersede a provision of sacred law so custom is important because law is meant for our regular living privy council conveyed the same sentiment concerning conversions who prefer to adopt islam but keep their rules but orthodox refused this view point and sharia act 1937 was enacted all schools trust in four ancient sources which we discuss quran sunna ijma and qiyas 
they do not reject concept of customs and prophet also kept existing arabian customs as long as they did not contradict muslim law so muslim law is at a supremacy recognized as addition to muslim law and no islamic law code so prophet and his followers they had to rely on conventions to resolve some issues how the conventions should be it should be four characteristics those customs number 1 it must be repeated regularly must be continuous noticeable it should be applicable to everyone should be rational it must not contradict any implied text of quran or sunnah because they they are the supremacy and does not have to be very old so those these four characteristics should be fulfilled by custom second secondary source is sources about the president that is judicial decisions we know that the high court supreme court they are the court of records judges emphasize the law when they investigate specific cases and these rulings appear to set precedent for future cases so precedent also can be the source of muslim law courts will certainly follow precedents rulings are binding on all lower courts and follows a framework in terms of its application wherein decisions taken by supreme court will by default apply to high courts and who cannot deny rulings given by supreme court after precedent we have the third is called legislation apart from muslim law there will be the enactments also by the legislative body kazi act 1880 guardian bonds act 1890 musliman waqf act 1923 muslim personal law that is sharia application act 1937 which applies for marriage succession inheritance charities then dissolution of muslim marriage act of 1939 then muslim women protection of rights on marriage 2019 act all those legislations also source of law and fourth and important last but not least is the justice equity good conscience which depicts idea of fairness justice equity excellent conscience islamic legal doctrines they said istihsan which means liberal construction juristic choice juristic equity what we refer today as equity law and to respond to various conditions in india a number of muslim provinces have been transformed although british originated this notion of equity it has been adopted by various muslim law schools it was used in most of the matters which have been handled by british under the muslim law so this is the nutshell of sources of muslim law primary secondary four primary four secondary i thank you very much for today's discussion of sources of muslim law thank you